If you're excited about Jesus Christ, let me hear you say, hey, praise God, amen. We're a Christ-centered organization, and we want to see lives change. And we know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is where life change happens. Reaching the hard to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to see you raise your kids in the church house and not the dope house. Amen. John chapter 3. We'll start in verse 1. There was, a man of, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher from God. No one can do these things, these signs, unless God's with him. Jesus answered him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? What's that say? It says Nicodemus was an old man. That's a Bible nugget. He was an old man. How can a man be born again, born once again when he's, been, when he's old? Can he enter into a, uh, his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel. That word marvel means amazed. Don't be amazed that I said this to you. You must be born again. The wind blows where it, where it wishes, and you, don't, you hear the sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who's born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus said to Nicodemus, you're a teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we know and testify what we see, and, we do not and you do not receive our witness. You earthly things and you don't believe. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? For no one's ascended into heaven. No one's ascended into heaven, but, but who, he who come down from heaven. That's the Son of Man who's in heaven. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Let me introduce you tonight to a man named Nicodemus. He's a respectable man. He's a moral man. He's a man who knew God's word very well. He was looked up to. He was old in age. He was a Jew. He was a Pharisee. He sat on the council called the Sanhedrin. There were 70 elders on this council, and all of them had to be top-notch Bible scholars to sit on this council. He was one of them. And this man comes to Jesus. He's confused. He's frustrated. Who is this Jesus Christ? And he approaches Jesus at night. I wonder how he came up with this conversation. It was the middle of the night. I think in my opinion that Nicodemus was walking into the temple one day. If you read John 2, you'll see that. There were some things going on and Jesus was preaching and teaching. And he would go into Jesus in the court of the Gentiles and where people debated and taught the, taught the Old Testament. And rabbis would come and they would teach each other and they would debate over topics. And Jesus Christ, he would go there to the temple and he would sit down and he would teach and he would stand up and preach. And Nicodemus, he would heal people and do signs and wonders. And Nicodemus, I bet you he came to Jesus and he seen Jesus and he said, what? I can't get over this thing, man. I can't sleep. I need to find out who this Jesus is. I got to get up and put my house shoes off and, 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 and run over there and find out where's he at. And he found Jesus Christ. And he met with Jesus at night. Why do you meet with him at night? There's a lot of debate why, but let me tell you something. I've studied this for hours. Nighttime in the Bible, especially in the book of John, has a spiritual application. It speaks of him being there at night because his spiritual condition was dark. Regardless of how much Bible knowledge he had, regardless of how many good works he had, regardless of how moral he was, Nicodemus was a dark, lost person, and he needed to be born again. Let me share with you a couple verses. Down on in verse 19, chapter 3, and this is the judgment. Light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wickedness... 
who, do, who does wicked things hates the light and does not come into the light. Lest his deeds should be exposed. For John chapter 11, verse 9. Jesus answered, he said, there's 12 hours in the day. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Jesus is not saying, don't get a night job. Jesus is speaking of spiritual conditions here. See, Jesus Christ wasn't your typical rabbi. Jesus Christ was a carpenter. What they say, he's a Nazarene. Nothing good comes from there. He's a carpenter. How does he know the law? How does this man know the Bible like this? How does this man teach and preach with power and authority? How can he call himself a rabbi? Because rabbis dedicated themselves wholly and solely to studying God's word. He was a carpenter. He did not have the time that the Pharisees had. He could not study like they studied. Let me show you a verse. John chapter 7 verse 12. And there was much muttering about him among the people. While someone said he's a good man, others says no, he's leading people astray. For fear of the Jews, no one spoke of openly of Jesus. About the middle of the feast, Jesus went into the temple teaching. Only rabbis could do that. And the Jews therefore marveled, saying, how is this man, how has he got this learning? He's never studied. They were saying, he's not one of us. Man, Nicodemus was blown away. You know what you can't do with Jesus? There's one thing every person has done. Not one, one person in this room has been able to do this one thing with Jesus. You can't ignore him. You have to make a choice. See, Nicodemus couldn't ignore Jesus either. You have to decide tonight what you're going to do with Jesus, Nicodemus. I can see Nick now. He's sitting at home. He can't sleep. He heard the powerful gospel. He heard Jesus preach and teach. And all these things kept going in his mind. Where is he from? Where is he going? Who is this man? There's got to be something about this Nazarene. He puts on his shoes. He goes to find Jesus. He's tired of wondering and he's ready for answers. There's people listening to the sound of my voice. And you wonder about Jesus. You call yourself an atheist, but there's no such thing. God has placed eternity in the, man, in the heart of each man. You know there's a God. You wonder, what am I going to do with Jesus? There's something about this Jesus. The most top-selling book in the whole entire world is the Bible I hold in my hand. There's one thing you can't do tonight, and that's ignore Jesus Christ. You have to make a decision. The kingdom of God is mentioned. Jesus says you can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. What's it mean to see the kingdom of God? That means to participate in the kingdom. You can search the Old Testament from front to back and you'll never see the phrase kingdom of God. But it's talked about all through the Old Testament. There's a man named David. And from David's line there was promised a Messiah that would come and rule and reign and crush the enemy under his feet. And all through history they've waited. The Jews today don't believe in Jesus, most of them. They're waiting for the Messiah as we speak. Jesus Christ came, their king to them. And they denied him and rejected the Messiah, Jesus Christ. But all who came to him, he did not deny. And he gave them the power and the right to become children of God. Not born of the flesh nor of will of man, but of the Spirit, says the Lord. Woo! That's the Jesus I worship. The kingdom of God is here tonight. He's in effect. The only two places mentioned in the kingdom of God is in the book of John is here. Verse 3, verse 5. I thought to myself, first thing I thought is I'm really thirsty, so I'm going to take a drink. Fired up. I'm like a volcano right now, ready to blow up. I thought to myself, what if I could jump into this conversation? Do you ever read your Bible and think that? You think, I wish I could just jump in there. I wish I could sit in a corner and just peek into this conversation and listen to what he's saying. And, 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 and I, I, I thought, what would I say to Nicodemus? How would I convince him? How would I have a conversation with Nicodemus right in the middle of this talk with Jesus? 
I think the first thing I, I would say to Nicodemus is this. Nicodemus, you have the wrong kind of faith. You have the wrong kind of faith. Notice the way Nicodemus addresses Jesus Christ. We know you're from God. No one could do the signs that you're doing unless they were from God. Nicodemus said, I believe. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus is from God. Saying you believe Jesus is from God isn't, isn't enough. Knowing your Bible isn't enough. I meet people all the time that have faith like Nicodemus. They have head knowledge, but they've never been born again. There's an 18-inch gap between your heart and your head, brother. And there's something that gets lost right here. Nick had, Nicodemus had fleshly knowledge. He went to the temple. He prayed. He gave. He taught the Bible. But he had no understanding of spiritual things. What kind of faith did Nicodemus have? Nicodemus had superficial faith and head knowledge, and that was it. John chapter 2, verse 23 through 25 leads into John chapter 3, verse 1. Look what it says right into this. John chapter 2, verse 23. Now when Jesus was in Jerusalem at Passover at the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all men. He needed no one to bear witness of man, for he himself knew what was in men. He knew the heart condition of every single man, no matter how good they may seem. I could see people bringing, bringing people to Jesus. This is a good God, Jesus. This is a guy that keeps the law. This is a guy who goes to church. He says, I will not entrust myself to no men because I know what is in all men. I'm not here to offer you presents, so to speak. I'm not here to offer you food, so to speak. I want you to eat. I want you to get full. I want you to put some clothes on your back. I want to see your kids blessed for Christmas. But the best gift I have tonight is Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. I promise you he has life. I warn some who have faith in yourself. You are not good. The best truth I ever found out in an old dirty prison cell was that there is none good. You say, that ain't good truth. It is when you're bad. And you know it. The word good means morally excellent. There ain't one of you that's morally excellent. Perfect. Nicodemus, with all his merit, with all his good works, with all his giving, with all his pharisaical this and that, wasn't good enough on his own. What's that say for you? What's that say for me? Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes man his flesh, fle makes his flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He's like a shrub in the desert and shall see no good come. He shall dwell in the parched places in the wilderness and in an uninhabitable salt land. Nicodemus, I'm going to tell you tonight, you can't trust your flesh. Nicodemus, I'm going to tell you tonight, your best 10 minutes won't get you to heaven. No program, no system, nor anything else for men. The problem with God's law is not God's law. The problems with trying to fulfill God's law is sinful men who fall and fail. Why do we have God's law? Why do we have the Old Testament? To show us our spiritual condition and none of us are good enough on our own. Some of you may come from the penthouse. Some of you may come from the poorhouse. But I'm here to tell you tonight, no matter where you're at, you're a filthy, rotten sinner outside a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we all need to bow our knees and accept Christ. Some of you have never done drugs or never seen a, 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 a day out on the street. But you're no better than a junkie with a needle in his arm. I don't care where you come from because we're all wearing the same shoes tonight that one was free that which is flesh is flesh that which is spirit is spirit I tell you earthly things Nicodemus and you can't understand how are you going to understand if I tell you heavenly things what was he saying to Nicodemus you can't understand spiritual things because you haven't been born again 
with all your head knowledge. You had no heart knowledge. Your spiritual condition was dark. One of the greatest privileges I have in this ministry is picking people up straight out of prison. I love it. I'll only miss it if I have to. And I got the privilege of picking one of my old friends up off the bus. And I'll tell you the truth. And I told him this, and he's here, and he'll tell you I told him. I said, I almost didn't take you. Because the Bible says a prophet has no honor, has honor except for in his own country, around his own people. And me and this man, we ran together. We ran the streets. We ran the streets together. We fought together. We did prison time together. I picked him up off the bus. Took him for a big, greasy, double cheeseburger and a chocolate shake and a supersized fry with salt all over that sucker, man. And I said, here, have that, right? Take a big bite, just let me watch your face because you ain't had nothing like that in a little while. And his sister called me before he came and she tried to convince me not to take him. She said, I talked to him on the phone and he is not ready yet. I even called to prison and told him, don't let him out. And I told him, I said, you know what? You can't blame people who don't believe in the supernatural because something supernatural is the only thing that could change a man like you and like me. See, once you're born again, you have a new heart and a new spirit and you can do things with God that you never thought possible before. See? And the next thing I'll tell Nicodemus is this. Nicodemus, you must be born again. There's a divine and supernatural side to knowing Jesus Christ that's more than head knowledge and lip service. Jesus said you must be born again to see, to participate in the kingdom of God. When I think of Nicodemus and Jesus Christ meeting on that rooftop, Jesus and Nicodemus, they're sitting there together. And I'm reminded of the Israelites that seen these signs and they seen these wonders. Moses said, God, how are they going to know you're from, I'm from God? How are they going to know you're with me? How are they going to know if I tell them about you? He said, here, I'll give you signs. I'll give you wonders. And you can do these things and they'll believe that you, I sent you. It was authoritative. It was an evidence that God was with that man. And Jesus, when he called his apostles, he gave them signs of the apostles. And they did signs and wonders for what? The same reason when God gave Moses signs and wonders. To bring authority to the words they spoke to said they were from God. Nicodemus comes to Jesus. He says, I believe in you because of what? The signs I've seen. Jesus said, seeing signs is not enough and believing in things you see is not enough. You must be born again, Nicodemus. He said, get to the point. Nicodemus believed Jesus was from God, verse 2. He's seen the signs, verse 3. Jesus tell him he'll never see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Verse 5 and 6, Jesus explains that one must be born twice. Once of water, once of the Spirit. And if you study John 3, you'll see that the water is not mentioned again, but born of the Spirit, and born of the Spirit, and born of the Spirit is mentioned over and over. So what's he mean? Your first birth is your water birth. You came from water. When your mama had you, her water broke. Jesus said that's the first birth. The second birth is a birth that is supernatural and from God in all of your heart knowledge, all of your head knowledge, all of your intellect, all of your acclimates, all of your popularity, all of your money, all of your lip service will not cut it. My question to you tonight is have you been born of God? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and been born again, friend? I see them, they're, they're, up, they're upstairs on the roof where they used to talk. And it's nighttime, and all of a sudden a wind blows through. Can you hear it? Jesus says, Creator God, John 1. He looked at Nicodemus. I think Jesus made the wind blow, man. Whew. 
He said, Nicodemus, you hear the sound of the wind, and you don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it's going. So is everyone who's been born of the Spirit. The word wind and spirit in the Greek are the exact same word. Listen to me tonight. They didn't have meteorology. Two ancient mysteries to these people. Where did the wind come from? Where is the wind going? Jesus said, just like that, ancient mystery. It's the same with God. The next time somebody tells you, show me your God and I'll believe, tell them, show me the wind. You can't see the wind, but you can feel the wind. You can hear the wind. You can see the power of the wind. I can feel God. I can see the power of God. Listen, God is uncontrollable. The wind is uncontrollable. God is all-powerful. The wind is all-powerful. God is unstoppable. The wind is unstoppable. And so are those who are born of God. You want to be powerful, unstoppable. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight. I can show you people in this room who were prostitutes with needles in their arms, who are now Sunday school teachers at local churches in Springfield, Missouri. I can show you a man in this room, his whole life, he grew up in the streets. He never had a job except for when it was in the chow hall in prison. He gave his life to Jesus Christ, got married. He was never a part of his children's life. And today he's a part of every one of their lives. He's buying a home. He's an electrician and he's five years clean off of drugs and alcohol in this room. Show me the wind. I'll show you my God. You must be born again. Some of you have given up hope because of what people tell you. You're listening to the lies of the world, friend. They say you'll always be a junkie. How many have heard this? You'll be just like your daddy. You'll never amount to nothing. That's a lie. Listen, my Bible is full of people who show me I'm a poster child for Christianity. Yes, I was homeless. Yes, I was in prison. Yes, I had track marks up and down my arm. Yes, I would have stole the gold filling out of your teeth while you was asleep. But God saved me, changed me, raised me up, and gave me life. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. The Hebrew word spirit brings life. These people lived in a dark, parched, desert land. Jesus says he come in the middle of a feast and they were, they, were, they, were doing the, they were pulling out the water of the well and they were marching around, they were chanting. And Jesus said this in John 7, 38, whoever believes in me, as scripture says, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit who those who believed in him would receive for as yet the Spirit had not been given because Jesus Christ was not glorified yet. Born of the Spirit. Jesus offers you life tonight. A purpose. And the last thing I'll say and we'll be done. Pay attention. Nicodemus, you've got to meet Jesus at the cross. You've got to meet Jesus at the cross. You know what altars are for? Death. Not life. This is a place. You know what high, the high priest and the priest were? Butchers. Butchers. Bloodletting. Making sacrifices over and over again that could never take away sin. When we come to the altar, guys... We surrender our lives. We die to ourselves. We put it all on the cross. My prayer was something like this. God, use me like the dope used me. Use me like the dope used me. Give me a purpose. I surrender my life to you. I'm on prison welfare. 
I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nowhere to go. I got a, I got a card I'm leaving prison with with not enough money to get a bag of chips and a soda at the Greyhound in Kansas City. Am I talking to somebody tonight? But I had Jesus. Give me a purpose. I had to die. Some of you need to have a funeral for yourself. You need to have a funeral tonight for you. It ain't about you. Christianity is not a selfish gospel. It's a die to yourself gospel. You have to meet Jesus at the cross. This conversation had an effect on Nicodemus. He leaves scratching his head. How can a man be born again once he's old? How can I go into my mother's womb? I don't get it. He went home and got to stewing on him. John chapter 7, we see a meeting with the Pharisees. And who stands up for Jesus? Nicodemus. Nicodemus. They rebuked Nicodemus. God was working on his heart. And then he met Jesus at the cross and helped Jesus down off the cross in John chapter 19. Have you met Jesus at the cross? When was the day that you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? You said, God, I give you my life. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. I'm here tonight to surrender everything over to you. I'll give you everything, God. Give me a purpose. Nicodemus was wrestling with the things he heard from Jesus, and he couldn't quite wrap his, wrap his mind around it. He's struggling with the intellect that he had, which is called flesh. Jesus takes this teacher of the Old Testament back in time. Verse 14. Jesus said this. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What did he mean by that? Numbers chapter 21 Shows us what he meant. The people had sinned. God sent judgment in the form of these serpents or scorpions, whatever you want to call them. And they went through judging the camp. They bit people. And when they bit people, those people that they bit were infected. And those that got bit by the serpents died. The people came to Moses and said, Moses. We're sorry, we sinned against God, pray for us. And Moses prayed for them, and God said, this is what you do. Make a stick with a serpent on it. Hold it up. And everyone who looks to that serpent will be saved. Now, you didn't have to be old to look. You didn't have to be educated to look. You could be young and look. You could be a Jew or a Gentile and look. But you had to look. To the serpent by faith. Just as the serpent was lifted up, so must be the Son of Man. Nicodemus met Jesus at the cross. He came to that cross with a man named Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea. He reached up to that cross. And he grabbed Jesus' limp, dead limbs. And he worked hard to pull them from the spikes. And as he sweat, as he was shamed, as he didn't care what his friends thought about him, as he gave up on his religion, he was up there fighting to get Jesus off the cross. Nicodemus and Joseph pulled Jesus off that cross and they put him on their back. And they carried him to a tomb nobody had ever lived in, who'd ever died, been buried in. And he put him in that garden tomb. And three days later, Jesus Christ, he rose from the grave. Amen. What happened to Nicodemus? The conversation with Jesus changed his life. He met Jesus at the cross. What will you do with this conversation tonight? What will you do with the Jesus we preached? The Bible's very clear. Repent and believe. Repent means forsake your sin. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. 
We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But here's the good news. We're really bad sinners, every one of us. But we've got a really good God. And it's not by anything I can earn on my own. My best day on earth will lead me straight to a devil's hell. It's by the work that Jesus Christ carried out. Tonight, I lift up Jesus. Just like the Son of Man was lifted up. If you'll trust in Jesus Christ tonight, if you'll come to the altar when we give our altar time, and you say, God, I want to give my kids a better present than anything up in that room. I want to give my kids a new mom. I want to give my kids a new dad. I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus Christ and lay it all on the line. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? Every head down, every eye closed.